morning, everybody. Kevin Kraft here in the Columbia, Maryland tour van, second swing. Uh, today's gonna be the fourth installment of the What's in the Bag. Uh, today's gonna be driver. So, you know, driver is such an important component of our golf bags, right? It sets up a lot of the holes that we play. You might only hit it eight, nine, 10, 11, or all the way up to 14 times around, but when we do, you know, this is, it really sets up what's gonna to happen to us on that hole. So we, you know, we really wanna make sure that we're dialed in with something that's giving us the best performance. Distance is great, right? But distance with no control doesn't do us any good. So um, great year for drivers. Uh, it's unfortunate that we've got this whole COVID-19 thing going because we've really gotten off to a great start with the equipment this year. Um, everybody's producing really good products and it's really an exciting time. Um, I've been primarily a Cobra guy over the last bunch of years. Um, you know, the look, feel, sound is extremely important to me and I've, I've you know, the Cobra thing really just seems to, to work for me. Uh, if you've seen the other segments, you'll see that I am absolutely brand agnostic. Uh, I'm all over the place and it is all about, you know, for me, what works best, what looks best, what feels best. Um, and there's a couple different kinds of, of customers that come in. There are those who, you know, they pick a, a set of irons and then everything else has got to match. And that's cool, no problem. Uh, and then there's those that really it's all about, you know, the, the performance, what the numbers are like, and look, feel, sound. So uh, I happen to fall into that category. So I've got four, one, two, three, I got four different manufacturers in my bag. Uh, and typically, you know, Cobra's been the, been the top of that bag. Uh, I've referenced that I hit the ball very, very high. So to give you an idea what happens with a driver, uh, over the last few years, my average peak height with a driver has been 145 feet in the air. PGA Tour average is about 90. So my ball is going really high. Uh, I jokingly say I'm like Jason Day with no power. So J Day hits it really, really high, so do I. He just hits it way, way further than I do. Um, so, you know, I've been trying to combat that as much as possible, but there's only so much we can do with equipment, right? Um, as an instructor, I could probably teach myself out of it, but I'm an old dog, I'm not gonna try and teach myself new tricks. I'm just gonna deal with it. So, I've been in a seven and a half degree driver now for a bunch of years, and that brings things down to an extent, right? So my extent right now, 145, and my landing angle has been about 47 degrees, which is great for a seven iron. You know, that's what we're exactly what we're looking for for a seven iron. So for a, a club that's coming into the greens, that would be fantastic. But I'm not hitting driver into the greens. So um, this year's a bit different. Uh, TaylorMade released the Sim driver. It's been a very popular driver but they released an eight degree head, which really did me a huge service because I can take that eight degree head and I can crank it down to six. <sighs> Seems ridiculous, right? Six degrees. But what this does for me is brings my, my peak height down to about 120. And then because my, my peak height's 120, my landing angle is now actually under 40 degrees. So when I'm fitting and I want to do get a, a driver landing angle, I'm looking for 30 to 40. Anything below 30 is going to be a little too low. Anything above 40 is going to be a little high. So I was at 47, right? So this gets me under 40 degree landing angle. I've actually picked up about 10 yards with this because of the extra rollout. Carries about the same, but the rollout is just so much better. Um, I have had to make some concessions. I don't like seeing the ball go left. So... Uh, it worried me at first, but if you look at the bottom of the club, I've got this weight moved almost all the way down into the heel. Turns out six degrees is harder to square up, right? The longer a club is, the faster we swing it, and the less loft it has, the harder it is to square something up. That's why a six degree driver, a lot less forgiving than say maybe a 10 and a half degree driver. Uh, one of the reasons why I defer to my three wood quite a bit is that you know, a three wood is a lot easier to work. It's shorter, it's got more loft. Well, this weight in the heel helps me square up the golf club. Um, so far, this thing's been fantastic. I've only got a few rounds with it uh, underneath my belt, but I see so much more of a penetrating ball flight. 
I've always been a flighter. I can work the ball up or down, but with this, I don't have to work nearly as hard to be able to flight a ball down. Um, haven't really had any instances yet where I've had to really try and hit it high. I expect that's not gonna be too much of an issue. Um, I feel a little bit like I'm cheating on Cobra here because I've played their stuff for so long, but um, I need that six degrees of loft. And it just sounds crazy, but um, you know, it does such a huge uh, favor to me uh, to be able to, to, to get that ball flight down. Um, matched up with a Project X uh, even flow shaft. I'm in a 65 gram shaft, 6.0, so it's stiff flex. Um, I've actually got this, I've, I've cut down all my other clubs. Uh, because I am pretty efficient with the driver overall, uh, I have left this at standard length. So when I'm fitting and I've got somebody that's doing really, really well with the demos, 148, 149, 150 really consistently, I'm going to allow them to have that extra length. Typically I like to make sure things are, are, are a little bit shorter because it's easier to hit. So if I get somebody that's not getting up in the 48s, 49s, 50s on the Smash Factor, Probably gonna cut that thing down a little bit, see if we can't hit it a little bit more solid in the center of the club face. Um, you know, I, if you watch the, the fairway wood segment, uh, I mentioned that I, I do have the yips with the driver. So there are instances where I simply cannot hit a driver. I know if there's out of bounds, tight down the right hand side, man, that's a three wood all day long for me because I've taught myself how to eliminate the left side of the golf course. So subsequently, my miss now is typically a, a hanger to the right. So if there's out of bounds tight right or there's water tight right, I'm probably in three wood. Um, but you give me something where it's just trees or something, I'm gonna be able to hit driver again. And uh, this has been uh, so far very, very enjoyable for me to get out and see, you know, instead of seeing this all the time, I'm able to see a bit more of a penetrating flight, which definitely makes back into the wind easier. Um, you know, like I said, I've only got a few rounds with this uh, under my belt, but we'll see uh, as, as we get back out on the golf course, uh, kind of how things go. But I am excited about it. Um, I love new golf clubs, you know, unlike everybody else. I love new stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not that the Cobra product wasn't great. It's not that the Callaway product wasn't great or the Pink product wasn't great. They're all great. It's all about what works best for us. And I'm just a bit of a freak. I need such a low lofted driver. So that's where I'm at driver wise for 2020. Um, you know, wish me luck. Hopefully it's going to be good and hopefully we're going to get back out there and play.